Hi, today we're going to build a fuzzy search in WIST that doesn't work like FinSuite attributes with the DOM element, but instead works with the array or the variable you're rendering the list for and thereby re-renders the list based on a recalculated variable. That way it is way more scalable and it is an actual legitimate solution to filter things or to query things in this case on the front end without having to have performance issues on the front end and without having to have time and um, usability issues while having to send the query back to the back end and wait until we get a response which can take some time. So this really is the perfect solution to do it. So as you can see, we have this input field here and if I were to put Noi in here, we're going to see his record and I can delete it. And it says, what's Noi? And this is the fallback, right? But the interesting thing is since this comes from our database, if I were to type it in again, we will get this result again. So this is actually doing the query from the data we get from the database without having to call the database all the time so that we can get the information in real time. So when we load the data from the database, we have the variable and we have a second variable where we will render the list from that will update as I type something in here, for example. But we always have the fallback from our initial database call. So we're going to utilize this so that when I delete something in here, I always have the fallback in doing a query from the original record. So that, let's say I deleted three records, but I want to query something. It queries it from the database without having to go through the database using the initial value, which is quite an interesting thing because it gives you the same possibility, but extends um, the usability while providing a faster experience on the front end. So the way this is being built in Webflow, just really quick, uh, we have an icon in here, we have an input, we have around that input a form. Of course, now we have to put the waste attribute um, on the form and on the input as well, right here. And then we just have this um, holder, which holds both together as a flex box, and that's it. And then we just have this nothing here holder, which needs to have cloak applied to it. Otherwise we'll have it flash on the page load. And we need uh, to add the with attribute of nothing found holder. And then we have what's, and then it will say the name. In this case, it says fuzzy. That's just the variable. So we have waste nothing found text. So we add this attribute in here so we can set the text in waste. And then we just have this text, which is, which is just generic, but you could also customize that if you would like to. And yeah, that's the setup in Webflow. And yeah, now let's go into our WIST setup. So first of all, just to go one step back, we have our uh, table content in here. And if you don't really feel familiar with the landscape here I'm talking about, um, I will link down the video of all the uh, videos I already did on this clonable just so that you don't miss anything of the setup we have already done that may be a preliminary step when working with this here. So what we're going to do here is we're just simply going to do the fuzzy search form. So we apply this on the form in here. Okay, so we have the form action on event submit. We're going to run this function, right? And what this top part is, we're going to define the fuzzy search algorithm in WIST. We don't need to do this in Xano. We can define a complete, simple fuzzy search algorithm in WIST. That's how powerful WIST is. And then we're going to use this. Um, first of all, we're going to define the scenario when we use it. We want to use it only when we have an input in here. So right now we don't. Oh, actually we have. We have NOI as an input. So we're only going to do that when NOI is inputted in here or when anything is inputted in here so we can search with it. Now, when it is inputted, we're first of all going to define the query array. 
we're going to define the search query, which is the input, and then we're going to merge those together as the query result, uh, doing the function in here, which was defined on top, right here. And we are then going to return um, the query result as the result for our variable v dot table underscore content, which is the variable, which is the array from which we're going to render the list. And then if else, we're just going to have, so meaning if there is no input, so meaning I remove the input and there's nothing in the input field anymore. So in this scenario, let's go one step back. If I were to remove everything here, we see we have the fallback from the original data source. So this is what we're going to do in here. We have, if there is nothing in here, so in this case, this would be the scenario we're going to go for right now. We would say, okay, we take this array from which we're, go or this variable containing the array from which we're going to render the list and we're going to set the, the r.products.data, so the result from our database query, as the value as the new value that is now in this variable. So let's go one step back just to uh, simplify it. So let's type in Le uh, oh, Leon. Perfect. So we'll have studio form in here. And yeah, let's look into our uh, page data. So as you can see, we have the fallback in here. This is the array, the fallback array. And right now we only have one item in here, but the moment I will delete it, right, we will have the fallback in this variable from which we're going to render the list and as the result from our products query from the database. So we're having this fallback. So basically when I type something in, right, I'm going to get a result and if I remove something, so there is the length for uh, for zero in here, I will take the array that I got from the database and set it as the new value of the variable that will render this list. So I have this fallback if I want to clear my search. And we're going to do this on event on submit and we do prevent default. So we're not submitting the form. And then we want to copy the same thing we did um, on top and do the same thing also for on event input and ideally also prevent default. Why input and why submit? Why do we need to do both? Because um, when the user clicks submit, mainly enter, some people do this by, uh, they just used to it. So they click enter, we don't want the form to submit. So we have to do on submit prevent default just as a best practice so that should the user click submit, we're not going to get an email, we're not going to have the UI change. Uh, we just need to add it in there so the user cannot submit the form as a form submission. Um, but mainly what this function is going to look into is on input. This is what we want to emphasize, but just as a best practice to not have any uh, UI uh, issues that there it will say thank you for your form submission in the input field, we're just also going to target on submit and prevent default in there. So yeah, this is what we're going to do for the query algorithm. And now we have to set the nothing found text. So let's type some gibberish in here. What's or however you pronounce that. Um, so we want to set this holder here, this black box, this one, we want to set the visibility if the input of the fuzzy search input, um, the dot length is greater than zero. Yes, we see we got some characters in here. So that's greater than zero. But the result of our search, meaning the current state of the v dot table underscore content equals equals zero. So we couldn't find anything in this array here. And because this is the array we're going to search in, um, we couldn't find anything similar to this array here. So we're going to push nothing in here, right? And if nothing is in here, we couldn't find anything, but the user defines something where he or she wants to search for. Now we need to show something, wait a sec, something went wrong, went wrong here, and this is what we're going to do in here. And then we have another action in here 
to set the text. So we're just going to do set text, plain text. And we target this to the text field that will show the error message. And we're going to say what's, and then we do plus, and then we do like uh, the quotation marks in quotation marks and different quotation marks. So we can use them as quotation marks from the text. What's, uh, um, and then we do the I dot fuzzy search input so we can uh, reflect what they typed in. And actually, now, now it's perfect. Here you go. Look at that. What's, we got the question mark as well. Perfect. So yeah, as you can see, that is just based on the input I'm providing. So perfect. So and then actually, let's go one step back. Just for clarification purposes, you could also, in this case, we're targeting the query array. So this is the array we're going to query from. It's now based on the r.products.data. So this is the data we're going to get from our database, from our data query. You could also base this on a different variable if you have on-page data, but in this case, the data is coming from the database, so it makes the most sense to base the query based on the data we're getting from our database so that uh, no data gets lost. Because if I were to do the query based on my array, where that has the data from the database set on page load, um, and then I remove something from it through a different query, I will then only be able to query within my query, which will narrow it down. And at the end, I cannot query anything, even though the record exists. So that's why we always want to base it on a single, source of, a single source of truth, which in this case is our Xano database and the initial data we're going to get from it. We want to do the query based on that. So yeah, and what you want to do if you don't want to query deleted items, you could store those deleted items in a variable and then define a function saying, I want to query within this array. But before I do the query in this array, I want to remove those items from this array, define it as a new array, and then do the query within this new array that has this certain records excluded. So there are a lot of possibilities how you can do that. But yeah, it is very simple to do a fuzzy search. You don't need to use any outsourced attribute system to do that because WIST is powerful enough to give you the possibility to do this business logic, this function within their editor so that you can customize it as your need or as your business or as your product develops. You don't need to put a source like a like a script tag on there and hope that their functionality works with what you anticipate for the next five years for your website. You just write your own code or clone this template. It is for free available in the video description. And then you can update and tweak around with it as your demand or as your need for this changes, which is a wonderful thing because WIST really gives you the power to build something that you can update as your situation changes. And this is really where the beauty in WIST comes super handy because you're able to adjust it. You're able to make it better as the time goes along. And this is a really wonderful feature of WIST, one that I really like. And that's why I'm going to show you how to do that because you may want to customize the code, which feel free to do that. You have that in here and you could even base this code for the custom fuzzy search query based on different parameters as well. And it is just a basic um, suggestion, basically how you could use this. Yeah, so let's clear our search and look at this wonderful FinSuite table. And yeah, let's delete some items and see the wonderful toast animations. So if you want to know how to do the toast animations, the video from that will be also in the video description. And it was so great showing you how to do this. I wish you all the best experimenting around with it. And thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate that. And have a wonderful rest of your day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.